Yeah, so I am Catherine Wild of Soul Care Mom. I think everybody can hear us okay. Um, but maybe everybody could let us know uh, where they're tuning in from today. And yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm in Texas. I'm a mom of three girls, eight and under, and I'm a certified yoga and meditation teacher. Um, and I am also a mindset and self-care coach for moms. And just to share a little bit about me, um, so I've got this, I've got three girls, and after the birth of my first child, I was so excited to be a mom, but the reality of being a mom started to sink in, and I was overwhelmed, and I was exhausted, and I just felt like I was constantly failing. <laughs> and as our family grew, um, I realized that I needed to start prioritizing myself because when I did, um, I found that I was more calm, even in amongst the chaos, and I felt more confident. And so over time, I found simple ways to bring self-care into my days. And I felt more nourished and loved. And, and I was able to pour that into my family. And so now I coach moms and help them to find their calm and their unshakable confidence. Yes. <laughs> and so I met Catherine. We both have blogs. So we've known each other like virtually for over a year now, I think. Yeah. So we've kind of been helping each other out in these different areas, which is really cool and exciting. So I'm Caitlin Spano, and I am a blogger over at Healthy Mom, Happy Mom, and I, it's weird for me to be looking at two screens. Yes, so I'm sorry, I keep too. darting my eyeballs around. <laughs> but so I help moms during pregnancy and the postpartum period, just helping them stay strong and fit um, and stay like prepared for labor and birth during that pregnancy period um, and then healing afterwards because a lot of times we're just really given a lot of misinformation during the postpartum period and it's really really crucial to heal the right way because if we don't we tend to injure ourselves and like doctors aren't really giving us that information so um i um I'm a certified uh, prenatal postnatal corrective exercise specialist, which is a really long jargon of words. But basically, I just understand how to help moms heal the right muscles and like use the right muscles and prepare the right muscles for that pregnancy postpartum period. So, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. <laughs> So um, let's just talk a little bit like the importance of self-care as a busy mom and especially like right now during this kind of crazy world that we're living in, that every, I mean, everybody is experiencing this. So it's not just like me in Vermont and you in Texas, like everybody is experiencing this worldwide. So yeah, that's unique. Um, so like, we, do you have any tip like I, the importance you know like why is it important <laughs> yeah that's a really big thing to to address because sometimes or no not sometimes a lot of times it gets put to the wayside because there's so many other things to do um right we, we mommy 24 7 and now so many moms have even been thrown into the role of homeschooling their kids and just the limits of not being able to go out. And we, so you're getting fewer breaks, less help, um, so many things. And it's so important to find that balance and take care of ourselves on all the different levels. So physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and maybe, so why self-care is important. We can look at, so humans in general need to nourish all these different areas of our lives to find right. harmony and balance. But um if we look at our kids, it's really easy to see in them. Like when um, when our kids are hungry or if they're tired or they feel disconnected from us, they're gonna be more grouchy. They're gonna be whiny or they're gonna have more meltdowns, right? Uh -huh. It's really easy to tell with them like, oh, they need something. But the same is true for us. So when we're out of balance, we have more mommy meltdowns. And um, that tends to be where a lot of guilt comes from for moms. Um, we end up feeling guilty and ashamed for losing our temper with our little ones. And, and then it ended up, we, we, you know, we say, we're not going to do this again, but it happens again. And right. we get stuck in this loop. Right. Yeah. Um, and so that, that is one of the main reasons self-care is important because it's a win for everyone. Uh, mom gets to take care of herself and feel nourished and loved and seen as a person. 
and then she can pour that into her kids and um and your kids are going to love it your husband's going to love it your partner whoever um they're going to see the effects of that and they'll start supporting you in taking care of yourself because it's a win for everybody um, yeah exactly and i think yeah. it's really important too because like you said like about our kids like we have systems so much like set up for them like their routine through the day and like trying to keep them like i think of my kids like they have a bath almost every night after dinner just because i do bedtime by myself so like that's what works for us but it gets them like set up and i i don't know that's kind of like their self-care you know what i mean to unwind at the end of the day and getting ready for bed just like those little things that they have so it's like we need that too like even if like for you as a mom, like even if it's like washing your face at night sometimes, you know what I mean? Like squeezing in those little things, like taking five minutes just to like feel fresh, brush your teeth, wash your face, put on some cream. Like it just feels good, you know, and it just ugh, decompresses. Yeah, exactly. um, and then I just wanted to hit on a point because because you were saying like we're thrown in the role right now of like people having to homeschool our kids and stuff and like a lot of moms and dads are like having to work at the same time like that's uber stressful like i don't even know how people are doing that honestly yeah. um so if anybody has anything they want to ask about that or like you know they're feeling stressed like feel free to share about that but i think like that in it of itself like you need to make time for yourself like even if it's like okay kids let's go take a walk yes. <laughs> you know what i mean even if it's including the kids but like you need to like do that like you need to get out in nature and do those kinds of things because we're just we have so many things going against us right now it's really hard i think yeah so, yeah those are definitely some really helpful things that you shared um and I also, Catherine, would you mind sharing? So Catherine had this really awesome challenge a few weeks ago about like starting a morning routine. And I know as a mom, like, especially if you have like babies that can be challenging, <laughs> your day doesn't always go super well, but um, she had some really helpful tips for that. Like, would you mind sharing some of those for like starting a morning routine? Like, even if it's like getting up only 10 minutes before your kiddos or whatever, or trying to anyways right um yeah so so keeping it short is is really important and doing things that that feel good to you is really important too because you're probably not going to get yourself out of bed if you really don't want to go run five miles or something right you're you're gonna do things that feel good to you so for me it's meditate i mean it's yoga for my movement um in the mornings anyway um, right and so just getting out and moving and stretching and then um, I usually, so I usually say a few minutes for movement, a few minutes for like meditation um, and journaling, and then a few minutes of doing something that just feels really good to you, fills your cup. If you like to draw or read or paint or sew, just bring a little bit of that into your day. And it really, it's a great way to start your day because you, you've already filled your cup up a little bit. Right, exactly. And just doing something like that you want to do without kiddos being like mommy i'm hungry or you know what i mean um i just thought that was really helpful because even starting with like five minutes of you know what i mean five minute increments i just yeah. think, feel like sometimes we try to bite off more than we can chew and be like oh i'm gonna get up an hour before my kids and then it just you know you can't that's not really realistic you have to right. start small. to keep um, it sustainable and, and uh, commit to it is really important too just any little bit is really helpful so yeah yeah I mean, sometimes you say oh i can only do five minutes of this but five minutes of that is five minutes and so it's worth it yeah yeah exactly um and i know one thing actually that that really helped me that challenge but i tend to i like to wake up and just like do a little meditation and then i just love to journal like in my peace and quiet time and then I usually do a workout like when the kids are awake because that's that's just what works for me. So you really do have to find what works for you. And it's like trial and error um, because I used to try to do my workout in the morning, but right now it's just not realistic. So I accepted that finally. I was like, that's just not where I'm at in my life. <laughs> so I felt like everybody else was doing that. So I had to do it too, but it just wasn't working. So. Right. And that's the thing too. Self-care doesn't have to look the same. Um, it's not going to look the same for everyone and that's okay. Right, exactly. Yeah. So do, you know, and I think it's okay to understand like trial and error will come. Like you might try something and it might not work. So it's okay to try again and just 
keep trying. <laughs> and especially with motherhood, there's so many seasons and it's always changing. So it's okay to adapt and change with it. Um, yes. You're not failing if you didn't, you know, if it's not working out right now, just try something else. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to talk about that too a little bit. So like for moms that are pregnant right now, like that's like super stressful to be going, thinking of like this and like having to go to the hospital and like all of those changes. So it's super, super important to like start building that little time just to like reduce your stress too. So that's like where I do with a lot of my clients, um, like the breathing practices that we do. Um, just because breathing through your diaphragm in general, so like that's what I teach. And diaphragm is just like up here in your ribs breathing. So <clears throat> that automatically puts you in like a parasympathetic state. So what happens as time has evolved, like we sit a lot more. So that causes us to breathe more out of our chest. And when we breathe, oops, my phone is dying. Um, when we breathe through our chest, our body senses stress. So whether that's like stress, we're like running away from something or we're feeling stressed out about like the world around us. Like if we're breathing through our chest, our bodies can't like um, decide like which is which, it just feels stressed. So your body automatically is like tense and tight. So you wanna like be wary of that because when you're feeling that, you wanna start breathing through your diaphragm because that automatically puts like your cells, your systems in a slower state. So like your body can decompress, which is, you know what I mean? So it's gonna help you feel calmer. So um, that's, that's what I share, which kind of goes in that. Yeah, too. that's fascinating. Cause when I'm stressed, I do I do tend to get tight in my upper body and I, yeah, that's a good point. I will, I will um, be mindful of that. Yeah. So it, it's just, and you know, a lot of times I talk to moms, like when I, I have my coaching class right now and they're like, I just, I always stop and think like, I'm not breathing through my diaphragm. And it's like, I do too. Like there's times when I'm not, and it's just like, it's a matter of reminding yourself to do it, knowing that when you think of it, just do it because then your body will do it more. But, you know, I struggle with it, too. It's not like I'm perfect. I mean, I teach it, but that doesn't mean I'm, you know, not yeah, perfect. We're all human, for sure. Exactly. <laughs> but I think it's just interesting to, to think about that because, you know, if you feel this, you're probably breathing here. So mm. take it down a little bit. Um, and that's good for moms, too, to know, like, during, like, their labor prep and stuff. Because, like, contractions are hard, right? Mm. So if, like you're going through that, that's like builds you up here too. So you, obviously it's a lot harder to, you know, relax during a contraction, but if you practice it beforehand, you're more prepared to come into that. So just being mindful of that, I think. And even like, you know, as a mom, being mindful to breathe when your kids are climbing all over you and spilling the milk, right. <laughs> have you pooping on the floor. <laughs> And can you walk us through how to do a breath with your diaphragm? Um, okay, yeah, sure. I don't know if you can see me well enough on both of this. So literally, can you see me okay here? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you just put your hands on your rib cage, like right under your boobs right there, you can feel it. So when you inhale, and you can kind of see it, you want to like – expand right here under your rib cage. So like a 360 lateral breath. So all through your back, like right here. So you just inhale. And then when you exhale, see, it will close if you can yeah. see my hands do that. So I can feel it on myself too. Yeah. And are you, is it, do you, should you breathe out of your mouth or either way? Um, either way, it, it might help calm you. Like if you're really mm -hmm. like focusing, you can breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, but it's not like necessary. So like, don't, don't stress out that you're breathing like both ways through your nose or whatever. <laughs> um, and then of course there's other things that you should incorporate into that, like your public floor moving, but that's like a topic for a different day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so try that today. If you're on, try it right now. <laughs> yeah. Just because it puts your systems all back in alignment, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me, I forgot my water. 
Um, so I'm trying to think what else we wanted to talk about. Just the self-care, building a routine. Um, I yeah. think we pretty yeah. much hit everything we wanted to talk about. Yeah, I love breath. Breath is one of my favorite tools to um Thank you for showing us how to do a proper breath. Oh, yeah. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but I love it because it's, it doesn't cost us anything. It's with us everywhere we go. And yes. Someone <laughs> just said they stopped. Stop doing dishes to do it, to breathe. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just whatever you think of it, just breathe. Go, <laughs> mama. kids to do it with you. Yes, okay. yes. Anyway. It's really helpful for kids, too. Yeah, just breathing in general. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, oh, and can I tell them? So Catherine has a few YouTube videos of like kids yoga and they're like super short, but like super fun. So you can Google that. Um, Soul Care Mom, right? Is that the name on YouTube? Yes, yes. Yeah. So super helpful, fun to do with your kids um, for right now. So yeah, so I'm hoping to do some more of those. Um, we we used to teach yoga at the park here in our neighborhood, and um, and we haven't been able to do that. So we're trying to make videos to do yoga with our friends. Um, it's really fun. Yeah, and that's yeah. a great way. Just like you were saying, you work out with your kids, bringing yoga um, into your day because yoga you can use your imagination. You know, um, a lot of the poses are animal poses, and kids love to yes. get into the animals. And so use that, and you can do your yoga and let them, you know, be in a forest or a jungle or something with you and <laughs> go on an adventure. Yes, exactly. And like, sometimes my kids always turn it into like a dance. They're like, mom, look at me. <laughs> Which is fine, but you know what I mean? It's, it's just them releasing whatever. So it's good. I like it, but. And I would say dance parties too are a great way to bring movement and fun into your yeah. days in a self-care break, especially like when we're doing school, if people, if everyone is feeling a little antsy, like we stop and just dance and put music on that's fun for everyone. And yeah. Yes. Yes. We always like now that the weather's nicer, when I notice my kids, like our school day is pretty short, you know, it's like 10 minutes sometimes. <laughs> but if they're not, you know, if I notice we're not doing well, it's like, just let's go outside, like everybody out the door. And like that even helps me too. So mm -hmm. I really think getting outside, if you can, like if you live in a city, that might be harder, but um definitely take advantage of those nature walks and stuff when you can. <clears throat> so helpful. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Do you have questions on the Facebook one? Can you see them? I don't, I don't see yeah. them. Okay. I don't see any here either, but. Let us know if y'all are feeling stressed out. Um... There's a delay on the Facebook one. <laughs> Is there? Oh, that's okay. Yeah, if there's any tips that you guys have been finding helpful with your kiddos, like feel free to share those. You know, I think we we need to come together right now <laughs> in this crazy time because I know in our state, um, I think they're going to extend the home order. Like it was supposed to be up Friday, but they're extending it. The governor mm -hmm. said, I think so. That should be interesting. Yeah. But like, I don't even know what that means at this point. Like I really don't. <laughs> We're just all staying home. So I guess that's just what it is. It's a kind of a figure it out as we go sort of thing. Yeah, pretty much. But okay. But, I don't think yeah. we have questions, but I would say, Yeah. Just giving ourselves grace, um, which is something we should always do, but especially right now uh, when we're just all trying to figure things out um, be kind to yourself. And um, you were, and you were saying um, like you, when you remember to, um, when you, when you sometimes forget and whenever you remember, you take your, your proper breath, right. Um, yeah. Just in the same way, one of the most powerful practices you can do is practice gratitude which also takes very little time. And um, the more, whenever you remember, just think of something to be grateful for. Um, and yeah, it'll get easier and it, it, you'll notice more and more things to be grateful for. And then your outlook for things becomes a lot more positive in general because you're always noticing those yeah. um, little blessings in your life. So, yes. so yeah. true. And like, that's why, like, I like to journal in the morning because I always write like five to 10 things like that I'm grateful for. And I just, it sets you up for like a positive note 
for sure. Yeah. And you do start to notice those little things more like, I can't think of one right now, but. <laughs> I'm just simply resting in bed. Yes, yes. <laughs> some are sleeping. Hopefully I didn't pick them up. <laughs> but yes. Oh, well, it was so nice chatting with you, Catherine. You. It was so, so nice. I hope that was helpful for everyone. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to go to Catherine's Instagram or her Facebook and she has like courses and free challenges all related to self care and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, if you're pregnant or postpartum struggling, you know, and want to learn about your breathing more or like reducing stress during pregnancy and gaining strength for all of that stuff. Hit me up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and what's this? I found even my gratitude has turned into my memory bank too, but that's been good for my soul. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. For true. Very helpful. Okay. I guess that's it. Are we good? I, I don't see any questions over here. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we'll just wrap it up. Yeah. This was awesome. Yeah. Reach out if you need any sort of support. Um, and yeah, we're help. here for you. Yeah, I always love talking with you. Yes, you too. And seriously, if you just need to talk to somebody, hit me up. <laughs> like seriously, I'm, I'm here for anyone. So <laughs> anytime. Okay, I'm going to end it on this one. All right, sending you guys love. Yes, bye guys. Thanks for joining.